So you've just paid for that once in a lifetime trip to the coldest, driest and windiest continent on earth. And now you have to pack for it. I'm Viv, I'm from The Crew, and if you've been following us, you know that we have been all over the world, all seven continents, and just recently back from Antarctica. So I'm gonna give you the what's what of what to put in your bag for the end of the earth. But before you go on that shopping spree, we're also gonna give you some money-saving tips, because there's a lot of things in your wardrobe that you already have that you can take with you. First up, thermal underwear. I highly recommend merino wool. I know that you may have had that bad experience with a wool sweater, but merino wool is actually very fine. Its main quality, however, is it keeps you very warm. The money saving tip for this one is actually invest in wool. It doesn't smell as much as cotton or synthetic fabrics, which means that one piece can often last you a week. At least it does for us. Mid layers, shirts, t-shirts, sweaters, pullovers, jumpers, hoodies, wherever you come from, whatever term you use. Ideally wool for this one, and depending on how much of a hot or a cold person you are, you may need to bring a few of these. A lot of cruise ships also have some pretty fancy dining, so if you're a person that likes to dress up, make sure that this mid-layer is somewhat presentable. A money-saving tip for this one is if you already live in a cold climate, or you do winter activities like skiing or snowboarding, you probably have all of this gear. So just bring your sweaters and your jumpers and your pullovers that you already have. There is no need to invest in technical gear for this layer. Big jacket. You will definitely need one of these. These is designed to keep you warm when you're on the Antarctic continent. I highly recommend a down jacket, so that's either like a goose down or a duck down fill. Also get it to be a little bit big because the way these work is they heat up space, the space between your body and the jacket. So if you have it too tight and there's no air in there to heat up, it's useless basically. Also get jackets a little bit long that covers your butt. This is great for when you're sitting on the zodiacs and you're getting splashed by the water and it gets all wet. It's nice to have a dry butt. I'd also recommend getting a jacket with a water resistant coating. You might be going to the driest continent on earth, but most tours will go there in summer and most cruisers visit the Antarctic Peninsula. So you're probably gonna get some snowfall and ocean spray. A money saving tip for this one, most cruise ships will actually give you a big jacket, but I would just double check that to make sure you're happy with it. Next up is waterproof pants. For the same reason that you want a water resistant coating on your jacket, you're gonna want some water resistant covering for your legs. Again, getting in and out of the zodiacs is often a wet business. Now, money saving tip for this one, if you already do skiing and snowboarding, take those pants. These are my ski pants and they work perfectly fine. If you can borrow, I would highly recommend that. But if you are gonna invest, and buy a pair of pants, do it where you are right now, and do not wait until you're in the town that you depart from. We left from Ushuaia, it's a tourist town, they know exactly why you're coming here, and if you leave waterproof pants to the last purchase minute, they're gonna charge you for it. Hiking boots. Now, you don't actually need these for your journey to Antarctica. You might be wondering about Wellingtons or gum boots or those big sorrel snow boots. Um, those are great, you can bring them, however I would double check on this because most cruise ships will actually give you waterproof boots to use and the main reason they do that is for the ITO environmental regulations. They want to control the cleanliness of the shoes that are going on to Antarctica. On our ship they gave us boots for the duration of the ship, the jacket we got to keep afterwards but the boots we had to give back. Hiking boots are recommended if you're going to stay around Tierra del Fuego, there's a lot of hiking around Ushuaia, which is where we left from, um, so hiking boots great for that. Covered comfortable shoes. Now, our cruise ship had a rule about not wearing slippers around the ship, which is ironic considering they gave them to us in our cabin. The rules are you have to be walking around in covered shoes. So I would recommend you bring something that technically slips on, but is a covered shoe. A money saving tip for these is don't get caught wearing your slippers. Hats, gloves, and sunglasses. Main tip here is that you don't want things that are gonna blow off easily. So no scarves, I highly recommend buffs because they go straight around your neck. When it comes to gloves, I would probably recommend a two glove system. So a thin glove and then uh, wrong hand, a mitt. It is gonna be really cold outside, but you're gonna wanna take your hand out to take photographs. So the two glove system will help with that. Hats with strings that can tie into the neck, great. It's the windiest place on earth. Good money saving tip for this one. There's nothing technical about this gear. So take the hats and the gloves that you already use. T-shirts, yes, pack them and your normal clothes because even though you're going to Antarctica, you're probably going in summer, which means that the town that you're leaving from is gonna be hot and you're likely gonna wanna enjoy that time without wearing a giant jacket. Personal entertainment. 
you're going to have a lot of time on your trip to Antarctica. Whether you're doing a cruise or an overland expedition, your journey is at the whim of the weather gods. You can spend a lot of time waiting in your tent or cabin for a weather system to pass, and so it's ideal to bring that book, that crossword, that novel you wanted to start writing, because now's the time to do it. A good tip is to download your Netflix shows, or Prime, or Hulu, or all those streaming sites. A lot of them have download options because I wouldn't rely on the internet on the ship. It's patchy at best, but the main problem is that it costs a lot of money. Now for those of you who have done cruises before and are well aware of the entertainment options, this is not a Royal Caribbean cruise. This is a ship that is designed to go into polar waters. So in exchange for a giant water slide, they've given you a double hull that means you won't get sliced in half by an iceberg. This does mean that the entertainment options are limited to a lecture on geology or a PG movie night. Cameras. Definitely bring them. This is one of the most stunning places on Earth. I would recommend bringing a long lens because, again, due to the environmental regulations, the cruises won't let you get very close to wildlife. You will get lucky with the penguins though, having never had a land predator, so they'll often walk right up to you. If you have a GoPro, definitely bring one, particularly if you're going to do some of the water activities like kayaking. They're also great to mount for a time lapse on the boat. If you have one of those little gorilla tripods for your iPhone, also great for getting time lapses or family photographs. Drones are banned. You can get a permit, however. I think you have to fly about six months out and you have to prove that you can fly a drone. I would definitely bring a USB stick and a computer. There is a lot of stuff to see out there. There's icebergs breaking, whales breaching, penguins sliding, 360 degrees around the ship. Often you'll be broken up into different Zodiac touring groups. It's likely you're gonna miss something or you'll be the one person that got that one epic shot. So make friends, be cool, and share your content among everybody. The money saver for this one is that most cruisers and tour guides will bring an expedition photographer and they'll give out the photographs. Socks and underwear, this seems like an obvious one, but my main point here is about the laundry. Don't expect to do the laundry on the ship unless you want to pay $3 per sock and underwear. Waterproof bag for valuables is a great idea, particularly a dry bag for keeping those cameras safe when you're getting in and out of Zodiacs. Money saver for this one is a sturdy Ziploc bag. Swimsuit. Yes, bring one to Antarctica. Mostly because there's this really dumb thing called a polar plunge where you can jump off the side of the ship into Antarctic waters. The money saver for this one is jump in your underwear or stay on the ship and watch a parade of videos. My hair is a total mess after pulling all these clothes on and off, but I'm sure you're with me. Next point is passport and visa. Obviously check this for where you're coming from, but the main point I want to make about passports is, and if you're not familiar with cruise ships, they will take these off you and hold them on the ship for the duration of the voyage. And then you'll get it back when you disembark. Seasickness pills. An obvious note is to pack the medication that you normally use, but I would throw in some seasickness pills or maybe some of these seasickness bands. The money saver for this one is that most ships will provide free seasickness pills and paper bags. Wall outlet adapters, obviously dependent on what country you're coming from and depending on what system the ship uses, ours use the European system, but you can get wall outlet adapters that are multi-faceted. Anyway, you get the idea. The idea is then to get all of this into one smallish bag. We recommend a wheeled duffel bag. This is the one that we took to Antarctica. The reason we like this was that it stood up on its end. These cabins are pretty tight. There's not a lot of room to move. So bags that can kind of stand on their end and kind of get Tetris into places are ideal. So enjoy your trip to Antarctica. I hope this helped or at least inspired you to go to Antarctica. If you want to see our adventures to Antarctica, they are all on the channel here. And don't forget to subscribe because we've got tons of upcoming adventures. I'm not going to say Greenland, but Greenland might happen.